Welcome everyone to Mount Calvary Lutheran Church and Early Education Center's first online worship service. Uh, we're recording this on Saturday. I had to be here because we still have our food giveaway. The government allows us to do that. And as long as I was here giving away food, we thought we would film a little bit of the worship service. Today's service won't be as long as a normal worship service, but it will have all the different parts of what worship is about. About music, about prayer, about studying God's Word, about coming together as a community. And we hope you enjoy this morning's worship service. We're going to begin with uh, some songs to share with you the theme of today, and that is trusting in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Hello, Matt Calvary. Let's sing a song together. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. sins and receive the forgiveness that Jesus Christ purchased for us on the cross. So do you this day confess the sins you've committed in thought, word, and deed? If so, by saying, I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and on that cross he paid for all the wrongs that we have ever done? If so, by saying, I do. Do you intend with the help of God's Holy Spirit to lead a life of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, by saying, I will. I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce to you the grace of God won for you by Jesus Christ on the cross. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we are part of a larger church community, and that together we are worshiping you at this time. Help us as we go through this time of worship to see Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and to know the power of his love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because of what Jesus said and did, people wondered who Jesus was. His followers said to him, Some people say you are John the Baptist, come back to life. Some say you are Elijah, or one of the other prophets. What about you? Jesus asked. Who do you say that I am? Jesus' follower Peter spoke up. You are the Messiah. But Jesus told them not to tell anyone yet. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and two of the other disciples, James and John, high up on a mountain. When they got to the top, Jesus' appearance suddenly changed. His face shined like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. 
two men appeared next to him. They were Moses and Elijah. Then a voice came from the clouds, this is my son whom I love, listen to him. The disciples fell down terrified when they got up and opened their eyes, only Jesus remained. From there, Jesus and his followers traveled to Jerusalem for a huge festival. Jesus went to the temple to share some of his thoughts with the crowd. There, the religious leaders became very angry at what Jesus was teaching. They knew he was claiming that he was the Messiah, the king they'd been waiting for. Enraged, they picked up stones to kill Jesus, but he managed to escape. After leaving Jerusalem, Jesus continued to teach and perform miracles. He heard that one of his good friends, Lazarus, was sick. So Jesus and the disciples traveled to where he lived. When they arrived, they discovered that Lazarus had been dead for four days. Jesus went to the tomb where Lazarus was buried, had the stone rolled away, and raised him from the dead. Soon it was time to go back again to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Two of his followers brought Jesus a meal to ride on as he came into the city. When he did, huge crowds gathered along the streets, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowds loved Jesus, but it didn't take long before he began clashing with the religious leaders again. He exposed their corruption and threatened their authority. So the leaders began devising a plan to get Jesus arrested. They met with Judas, one of Jesus' followers, who agreed to turn Jesus in to the authorities in exchange for some money. Then, the religious leaders waited for the right opportunity to arrest him. We now continue with our gospel lesson. I know it seems kind of silly, but I encourage you to stand up. Uh, the gospel is a very important part of our worship. Jesus is here present with us. The gospel reads from Luke chapter 9. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowd say that I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets of long ago who has come back to life. But what about you, he asked them. Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Christ of God. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and teachers of the law, and he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. This is the gospel of our Lord. We now continue with our message for today. We're continuing our sermon series on the story. Uh, the story is the Bible condensed as a continuing story, and we're on lesson number 25. If you haven't been with us, uh, you can go back to our website and watch all the sermons about the story. And today's story is about Jesus, the Son of God. And the part of the story we're on reminds me of an old, old TV show that some of your grandparents might remember called What's My Line? And What's My Line was about a group of guests trying to figure out who the person was in front of them by asking them questions. And as the questions were answered, they could guess what that person's line of work was or who they were. Often, if it was a very, very famous person, uh, they would be blindfolded and wouldn't be able to see the person. And again, they had 10 questions to figure out who the person was. One of the most uh, famous uh, parts of What's My Line, you might say, one of the famous shows, had to do with this guy. And do you know who this guy is? Some of you older people might know him. A lot of younger people have no idea. And the people on What's My Line had to guess who he was being blindfolded. And they were able to figure it out. Have you been able to figure it out? He was a very, very famous painter. Uh, many, many years ago, a guy named Salvador Dali. And they figured out who he was and what his job was in painting. Uh, Jesus in the Gospels is kind of the same idea. Who is this Jesus character? And that's what today's sermon is all about. Who is this man, Jesus? 
And here in this time that we are in, it's very, very important for us to know who this person is Jesus, whom we worship. Uh, And so we begin with kind of an overview of what we're about today. Jesus, the Son of God. And the big idea of today's sermon is this. The central point of each gospel is not simply to convey information about what Jesus did or said. Each gospel is written to bring readers to grips with who Jesus was. You see, lots of people have said lots of amazing things like Jesus did. But Jesus' importance is not so much in what he said, but in who he is and what he did for us. And that's what we're going to be looking at today as we look at Jesus, the Son of God. Who is this Jesus? Uh, The Gospels take a lot of time to drop hints throughout uh, their message. For example, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, is recorded, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So we look at these hints. What hints are there about who Jesus is? Well, we know his name's going to be Jesus, which basically means God saves. He's going to be great. He's going to be son of the most high God. He's a descendant of David, but his reign is going to last forever. There's something special about this Jesus character. And each gospel writer then forces the reader to scratch his or her head and wonder, who is this man? And they do this by allowing us to see Jesus through several different perspectives. By looking at Jesus through the eyes of his followers, through the eyes of the desperate, through the eyes of the skeptics, through the eyes of the powerful, through the eyes of the outcasts, through the eyes of the educated. Each one of these different groups of people look at Jesus and have to decide who he is. Uh, Take, for example, uh, the ten lepers. Uh, They meet Jesus, and they know there's something special about him because they ask for Jesus to heal them. But only one comes back, and that one who returns, I'm sure, is wondering, who is this man who just healed us? We see it as Jesus healed different diseases of other people, like people born blind. Once Jesus healed them, they had to ask themselves, who is this man that just brought my eyesight back or made me able to walk or brought my loved one back to life? Uh, One of my favorite stories of uh, Jesus' compassion and love was to the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And he stands up for her and he protects her. And I'm sure when this was all over, she wondered, who is this man that just saved my life? this person of compassion against all those religious people that were trying to kill me. And then there's the story of the disciples, and they literally ask the question, as Jesus calms the storm, they ask, what sort of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And then the story leads us to Pontius Pilate and his question about who is Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Who is this guy that's been brought before me? Why is he here? Pilate asks all these questions. So who is this man? Who is this Jesus that we are seeking in this time of our lives? Well, as Jesus moved closer to the cross, the question of identity takes on more and more urgency. Uh, One day, Jesus was meeting with some people and they said, who do you think you are? And Jesus said, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him. And you have seen Abraham? Very truly, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. Who is Jesus saying that he is? He's saying that he's the great I am of the Bible. The great I am uh, that Moses came across in the burning bush. As Moses asked, who are you, Lord? What is your name? And God said, my name is I am that I am. 
So all through the Gospels, we see these hints growing more and more bolder of who this Jesus is. And then Jesus makes his confession very plainly. And this is from our Gospel reading. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with them, he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. God's Messiah. Those two words articulate the hope of the ages. For the first time in human history, God's prophesied anointed one was clearly recognized. Jesus was no longer a, a fuzzy Messiah. He, he, who he was and what he was about was coming very, very clearly to Peter. And that is what the story is all about. The whole story of the Bible, as the story says, the entire story is all about returning to God. And we can only know this if we know the true identity of this man, Jesus. And that is what Peter is receiving, the identity of who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is God among us. And that is what we confess as part of our creeds here at Mount Calvary. As we confess every other week the Nicene Creed, we see this clear picture of who Jesus is that he's the only begotten son of God, begotten of the father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. That is the Jesus of the New Testament. And that is the Jesus that's been appearing to people since then, appearing to people like a mean old guy called Saul, a Jewish rabbi who was persecuting the church. And on his way to Damascus, he gets thrown off his donkey by a bright light. And this voice begins to speak to him. And Saul says, who are you, Lord? And the voice replies, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. He understands who Jesus is. As Jesus rides in Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, many people begin to understand who he is then also as they proclaim him, Hosanna, hail king of the Jews, as he rides in in triumph. So Peter had the right answer, but even though he had the right answer, he had a wrong expectation of what this means, that Jesus is Messiah. And so Jesus begins to share with them the true meaning of Messiah. As it says here in Luke 9, Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone, and he said, the son of man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Jesus wanted Peter to have the right kind of expectations of who the Messiah is and what the Messiah would do. And so at the beginning of the Gospels, you see Jesus tearing down wrong ideas of Messiah and then building up the right kinds of ideas. The Messiah does not come to give you wealth and prosperity. The Messiah comes to suffer and die for your sins, that you might inherit eternal life, that you might take up your cross and follow him in a life of service and love for your fellow man. And often what gets us in life is when our expectations meet reality. Right now, none of us expected to be living in our homes. None of us expected so many businesses to be shut down. None of us expected that the world would be the way it is right now. But this is the reality that we are in. And what we are living through is very, very common to humanity. Uh, plagues, diseases have been part of living on this planet uh, since the very beginning. And Jesus was very, very clear about that in John 16. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so this Jesus comes not to deliver us from the trials of this world, but to give us peace in the midst of the trials that come upon us. Reminds me of a, a prayer that we passed out a couple years ago from Max Lucado. And this might be a prayer for many of you to go back to and remember. 
because this is the promise of Jesus. You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. Don't be foolish or naive, but don't despair either. With God's help, you'll get through this. And that is the Jesus that we worship, this Jesus who will help us through this time. So who is this man? This man is Messiah, Jesus. And he comes to walk among us. And he asks us that question, who do you say that I am? And he wants us to reply like Peter, you are Messiah, you are my savior. You are the one who's come to walk with me in life. And he comes to challenge us with the kind of faith we have and who our faith is in. And this is the last part of today's message. It's a, a story about a, a young man who comes to Jesus and falls before Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And the man answered, I've done all these things. And then Jesus says to him, sell all you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. Why did Jesus say those words? Because Jesus wanted this man to depend upon him. You see, our children understand dependence. They know what it's like to be fully a trust of another person for all their needs. And sometimes they don't recognize that they have needs because their needs are being so well met. Jesus just comes to us with how to live. He comes to us to come and live with us that we might depend upon him. You see, we in our nation and so many of this world, we have put our trust in the wrong things. We haven't said in God we trust. In our hearts, we have said in gold we trust. We have trusted the things of this world. And when we trust the things of this world, eventually they don't work out very well. In times like this, Jesus wants us to trust in him. And so this man lacked faith that God could meet his needs. He rejected Jesus' invitations to come and follow him. And that's what Jesus is calling us to do on this time, to come and follow him, to know that he is here with us, walking with us through what is going on. And since he's walking with us, we don't store our treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Our real treasures are our faith in Jesus, our love of other people, the cross and God's forgiveness in our life. Uh, in uh, the storybook that I'm reading, uh, the author said, we often lack a true understanding of our real needs. Having grown satisfied with the distractions of wealth the world provides. So this is a time not to trust in our gold or bank accounts, but to trust in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and all that he has done for us. And remember once again, his most important work, his work on the cross, where he came and died for our sins. Again, Max Lucado wrote, our Savior kneels down and gazes upon the darkest acts of our lives. But rather than recoil in horror, he reaches out in kindness and says, I can clean that if you want. And from the basin of his grace, he scoops a palm full of mercy and washes away our sin. This is our Jesus who loves us and cares for us. The one that is walking with us all through life. The one that reminds us that life is not going to be painful, it's not going to be quick, uh, but God can use these messes for good. We're not to be foolish or naive, but not despair either. With God's help, we will get through this. And God's help is in Jesus. So there's a, a song that I want you to, to think about uh, the next couple of weeks. And let this song kind of be your idea of how to get through whatever lies ahead. It's a song written by Christians in the 1800s, Christians who experienced what we have, experienced different diseases and pain and suffering. And in the midst of all that came upon their life, this is what they hung on to. 
I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for full salvation, free and true. I am trusting you for pardon at your feet, I bow, for your grace and tender mercy, trusting now. I am trusting you for cleansing in the crimson flood, trusting you to make me holy by your blood. So this is where our trust needs to be in this Jesus who has paid for our souls, who is our Savior, who walks with us every single day. So the central point of the Gospels is not simply to convey information about what Jesus did and said. Each Gospel is written to bring the reader to grips with who Jesus is. So who is this Jesus to you? I pray that he is your Lord and your Savior and that you allow him to walk with you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time for our offering, and we want to thank all of you who support the work of Mount Calvary Church and school through the years. Uh, this week, we were able to give food to 40 families. I was able to deliver medicine to one of our families that were very, very ill. They were so happy to see me come to the door with the medicine that they needed. Our Awana kids got to meet together online with their Awana teachers and talk and pray and learn their Bible verses. Uh, Pastor Greg and his wife have been calling up as many members as they can, seeing what needs are out there to be met. Uh, so a lot is going on here with your offerings, even though church is closed. About 80% of our offerings do come on the plate on Sundays, and so that's going to have to change for us to survive. And so we encourage you to continue with your offerings. You can mail them in, uh, P.O. Box 250, Lake Arrowhead, 92352. You can go to our website, mclutheran.com, or you can text to give. And to text to give, you uh, put in the words give, G-I-V-E, and then this number, 888 three nine five five two eight nine and that information will be uh, on our website and will be at the end of this worship service so thank you for supporting our work thank you pastor let's sing that song that pastor was just talking about in his sermon i'm trusting thee lord jesus it goes like this Trusting thee forever and for all. It is now time for prayer, and our prayers there are very special. They were delivered to us from the president of our denomination. 
and there are prayer that uh, millions of Lutherans will crane this week in this time of need. We pray, loving God, bestow your grace upon all nations on earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Give us wisdom, charity, and courage in chaotic times. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, graciously defend us from all calamity by pestilence, scarcity, famine, and every other evil. Spare us from disease and its fear. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, especially those who remain in harm's way for the good of their neighbor. Be the God and Father of the poor, the unemployed, the helpless, the hungry, the needy, and comfort the distressed and those in sorrow. Look with mercy especially upon our church during this time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, we implore you, O Lord, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. Fill us, your children, with hearts moved towards generosity, and keep your ministry and your church always before us, so that we may have compassion to help all in need, as we are able. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant your Holy Spirit, O Lord, to those who come to the Lord's table and those who receive the heavenly food that comes to us in word and sacrament. Keep us strong during this time and use us to be your hands and feet in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord God, we thank you so much that you have come to us this day. Bless us and help us to trust in your presence, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now together as a church community, we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Announcements this Sunday at church. Know that your church is here for you for any needs that you have. If you are trapped at home and fearful of going to the store, you can call Pastor Greg and his wife Susan, and they are putting together a team to go to the store for those who need pickups from the store or uh, other places that need to be uh, picked up. If you want somebody to talk or pray with, myself and the church staff are always here for you. And again, all of our phone numbers will be on our church website. And we encourage you to use this time to invite people to come and be part of this worship service. This is a great opportunity to invite your friends and neighbors to worship with you either uh, online or maybe in the backyard. We don't know where you're gonna wind up worshiping. Uh, but have them know that this opportunity is there. Uh, so may the Lord bless you this day. One last song before we go. Build my life. song we could ever see, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. 
Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. Amen.